Good morning. It's 8 a.m. in Singapore, 1 a.m. in London, and 8.30 a.m. in Pyongyang, where North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un has attended a groundbreaking pop concert featuring South Korean stars. The event is the latest in a series of conciliatory gestures that appear to mark a thaw in relations between the two sides. The leaders of the two Koreas are due to hold a summit on the border later this month. This report by James Waterhouse contains some flashing images. Our Indonesia editor Karishma Vaswani caught up with Joko Widodo, or Jokowi as he's known in Indonesia, and asked him where the victory was still certain. Then how would you explain ba, the fact that Prabowo Subianto has been racing up in some polls, and in an election which looked like was, it was going to be a walk in the park for you, you are now having to defend your position. There have been smear campaigns, bad rumors, and lies spread about me. The criticism has been that you have not been able to articulate your vision and your mission, as well as Prabowo Subianto has, that you're politically inexperienced, you don't know how to run a country. I think you can see in the debates that our vision and mission are clear. So come July the 9th, are you confident that you will be the next president of this country? I am country? very confident. We are going to win. This is the central business district in Jakarta. Now, this part of the city isn't usually so badly affected by the heavy flooding that accompanies the seasonal rains. But this time round, you can see for yourself, this city has been paralyzed, as many parts of Jakarta have also been because of the rains. Officials have warned that over the next few days, the rains will continue to increase, and that could mean that floodwaters here and around Jakarta will continue to rise. We can no longer tolerate these chronic trade abuses. One of the things Donald Trump always said he was going to kill off were big multilateral trade deals, specifically the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, or the TPP as it's also known. He did pull the US out, and given the fact that America was the biggest economy in the deal, many thought the TPP would die. It didn't. The 11 other countries in the agreement decided to push ahead without the US in it. He said he was going to call China a currency manipulator on his first day in office and slap tariffs on Chinese goods coming into the US. He didn't. But we have seen moves from the US to keep Chinese companies out of the United States. And he's made some headway in getting US financial firms more access to the Chinese market. If you're anything like me, you're probably late. So enter Singapore's Smart Nation Initiative. It's part of the government's plans here to introduce technology in pretty much every aspect of daily life. They've installed these interactive bus maps in some bus stations across the island. That way you can plan your journey and if you're looking to save time, you can also check on bus timings and when uh, the next bus that you want to get on is expected to arrive. All so that the lives of commuters can be more efficient. Because of its small size, Singapore has always tried to stay ahead of the curve to survive. Smart Nation is a part of the future strategy, but it needs to speed up to achieve its ambitions. Karishma Vaswani, BBC News, Singapore. Please join me in welcoming the World Bank's President, Dr. Jim Kim, and the Prime Minister of Singapore, Lee Hsien Loong. Thank you. Let me start with our hosts today, Dr. Kim. You've just released the Human Capital Index. You and I talked about it uh, earlier today. And it's the first time that the bank has done this. But, you know, the bank has always prioritized healthcare and education. So why have you done this now? What's the reason? Well, actually, it's not true that the bank has always prioritized health and education. You know, uh, we, uh, looking back uh, when I first came to the bank. So, uh, Prime Minister, Singapore does very well in uh, the uh, business report, but it's at the top of the list in the Human Capital Index. Congratulations, as a fellow Singaporean, that makes me very proud. Um, yes, that definitely deserves a round of applause. So, you know, you look back at how Singapore first started, and back in the years of independence, nothing like how it is today. So was this the plan from the beginning? How did you do this? Well, we got some things right at the beginning, but we can't pretend to have forecast everything 
from the outset. Absolutely, uh, you know, Prime Minister. I, I suppose, Dr. Kim, that the point I'd like to make uh, with you is that Singapore is a unique example. The size and the scale of the nation, it's, it's a small country with a small population. But the whole idea of the Human Capital Index is so that the lessons from countries that have done well can be transplanted elsewhere, in theory, right? So are you seeing the kind of investment that we need around the world uh, to be able to prepare us for the digital future? Well, frankly, no, and that's exactly why we did that. And specifically, how will the Human Capital Index, do you think, galvanize people? Is it the ranking that will make them feel like, I've got to get better in the ranking? Well, unfortunately, you know, um, th there have been so many studies that have shown the relationship between better health and economic growth. Just looking to the future, though, Prime Minister Lee, you know, you've, so far Singapore has done remarkably well. There's no question about that. But do you feel that the job is done? You know, for the future generation of my children, for instance, in Singapore, how do you continue to invest in human capital? Because will the same things keep working? No, the job is never done because uh, you reach a new level, there are new expectations, new challenges arise. So, Prime Minister Lee, on that point, you know, given the fact that Singapore has had such remarkable success, what would your advice be for those in the audience, other finance ministers who want to replicate the success, watch those of us watching online as well, to be able to replicate Singapore's success story? Well, I think the first starting point for the government must be that we want to improve lives for all of the population. And Dr. Kim, your sense of how you think this will be received amongst people, countries who are trying to replicate this success and get further up that ranking? Well, I have to tell you, there were, there were many not many, but there were at least a few countries that really didn't want us to do the ranking. Investing in human capital, it's so apparent that it is the way that countries need to prepare for the digital future. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us for this discussion. It is really a privilege and a pleasure. Thank you, Prime Minister Thank you. Lee. Thank Such you very an honor, much. really an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Kim, thank you so much. Thank you. Please.